after showing the recent progress in Orbital Life Photos would be a great opportunity to clarify some questions that always come up and give a better overview of the project. For those of you who just discovered the simulator, there's a link in the video description to a 5 minute lightning talk that I gave a few months ago, so make sure to check that out first. This new set of slides will expand a little bit into the organization of the project, the repositories and future plans. What you just saw in the video is possible thanks to different sub-projects within Orbital, and those sub-projects are aggregated in the main Orbital repository in GitHub, which contains in addition documentation of the project, uh, tools, scripts, uh, resources, and well, <laughs> the very lame website that we have. The main sub-repository would be Orbital QMU, which is a hard fork of QMU 2.11 from two years ago, and it basically re-implements most of the PS4 hardware that can be reached from the CPU or actually that can be reached by the kernel that runs in the CPU and also the re-implement some firmware as a high-level emulator we'll go into details later so, uh, since a full system emulator would be too demanding for a console as powerful as the PlayStation 4 we also have Orbital Hexem in the top part of the slide uh, it's basically a Intel Hexem hypervisor fork which had supports to PS4 kernels uh, this hypervisor, which is also called Virtual Machine Manager, or VMM for short, is basically the piece of software that allows another kernel to run uh, alongside your host kernel, which would be Windows or Mac OS or whatever you want. And it allows that kernel to run directly on the CPU without translation, uh, so it's really, really fast, and it does so by using the Intel VDX extensions, or also the AMD SVM. So you will be able to run the PS4 kernel directly on your Intel or AMD CPU. The AMD part is still work in progress, but Jarvis is taking good care of it. Jarvis is also the guy who just helped me with the USB emulation part, so yeah, really skilled guy. Um, well, and basically Hexem would be blind to the virtual machine. It sets it up, but it doesn't have really control over it. Uh, QMU is the main part, and what it does, basically, once the virtual machine is set up, it makes it boot right into the BIOS. QMU typically uses CBIOS, but because the PS4 consoles have several quirks, it doesn't work as is, so we have forked it. Uh, we forked CBIOS 1.11, and we added support for certain quirks, uh, especially when it comes to PCI device allocation. We also disabled VGA uh, for several reasons, so all those quirks, which would typically be handled by the actual PS4 BIOS, uh, well, it's not really a BIOS, but you get the idea. Those are all taken care of by Orbital BIOS. And that chain loads later on into Orbital Grep, which is the bootloader. On the actual PS4, there is some component who is responsible of loading the PS4 kernel, which is called Orbis. And that PS4 kernel has some quirks. Uh, it's based, the kernel is based on FreeBSD, but it has some differences. There is uh, some custom segments and dynamic tags and there is no send up and grub as is uh, freaks out when he sees a kernel, a FreeBSD kernel with no send up. So all of that needs to be patched and those two components, Orbital BIOS and Orbital Grub, are actually pieces of software that run inside the virtual machine. So that's quite a common misconception. Some people think that they are part of the emulator, but they actually are not. They run inside the virtual machine and they mock the processes that the actual PS4 bootloader would do but because we have no access to that bootloader, I haven't managed to dump it or decrypt it, so we have to do something that is closely related to what the actual PS4 would do. And then the final step, it will be jumping to the actual kernel, as you see on the top right corner, and then, you know, everything else would load. And that's ho basically how Orbital is organized. So now we are going to go deeper into the main part of the emulator, which is Orbital QMU, as I said, so let's check that out. Orbital QMU creates a PS4 machine class which inherits from the regular PC machine implementation in QMU. There is three main areas to the PS4 machine. Uh, first, it uses the regular x86 CPU device implementation which executes x86 code either via the TCG JIT translator or any of the hypervisors listed below. Although Hexem, of course, is the priority for developers and it's the only one who is actually able to run the entire PS4 software stack. Then there is Liverpool and Eolia. Liverpool would be the APU, which is GPU, all the CPU cores and the Northbridge, all that stuff. 
and then Eolia is an ARM SOC which exposes some peripherals. We'll go into details in each of those devices. Eolia exposes peripherals that you would typically see in a south bridge, all stuffed into one single PCI device, that is a USB, HCI, Ethernet controller and so on. It's absolutely not documented, so if you want to learn more about it, please refer to these resources. There's a great talk from Markan in CCC and also a great blog post in a failover flow. What you see on this slide is the current status of Orbital at emulating each of those device functions. Blue squares mean that the device kind of works and orange squares mean that it doesn't work at all. The Aeolia ACPI is completely ignored and we use the regular ACPI implementation from QMU and that seems to work. The Ethernet controller is not a priority so we just hard code few registers and that's it. AHCI we use it for HDD even if the PS4 uses a USB for hard drive. That seems to work aside from few timeouts so maybe there is a bug or non-standard feature. SDHCI is for SD and MMC, probably for some memory in the motherboard, but we don't uh, use it for now. Then there is the PCIe glue device, uh, which is uh, well contains many many devices, MSI, some weird MSI implementation, timers, RTCS flash, and the star in the name there uh, means that uh, we do high level emulation because ICC uh, is a protocol that goes through that uh, device function that talks to some other chip and which runs an ARM image. And we don't want to run that ARM image for performance reasons and for because it will be too complicated to set everything up. So we just do high level emulation of those commands and that seems to work. Then there is the DMA controller and some memory stuff. We ignore that for now aside from that a small window into the ICC data that we have here. And finally USB 3.0 which has a very quick implementation. There is three controllers stuffed in there. As you saw in the video, host USB pass-through works, uh, so you can connect your actual controller and use it. Uh, virtual USB, so you have a virtual controller that doesn't work yet, but we are going to work on that soon. Up next is the Liverpool APU. As you see in the resources, it's nicely documented. It exposes some peripherals like the root complex, root port and processor functions, which luckily for us are not really used by the kernel. Only the PS4 BIOS uses them and the kernel uses one particular processor function to read the chipset version and that's it, so we can ignore those. The IOMMU is used and we route it through the IMD IOMMU implementation from QMU. Uh, we fixed several bugs and it works now, uh, we might upstream that one day. And the important part here is the graphics controller and audio controller on the right. Regarding audio controller, since sound is not important, we, all, we have mocked it, uh, we have hard coded few registers and that's it. But as you saw in earlier videos, we have actually a video output and we have graphics kind of working, so we are going to go into details there. The most important part of the GC is the graphics and compute engine, uh, GCA or GFX, which contains multiple sub-engines. The command processor is controlled directly via memory registers that tell it where to read commands from, PM4 commands, if you are familiar with them, and those might point into another, other buffers with, containing more commands. Those commands might be restricted to a particular virtual memory ID, which is used to provide some context and isolation for multiple rendering contexts, um, and they basically modify the state. Uh, by the way, take this slide with a grain of salt. It's not my goal to explain how AMD GPU works. To be honest, I'm not really an expert on that area, but I want to give some idea of how it uh, roughly works, how Orbital turns that thing into an actual image in the end. So yeah, it, basically those commands modify some state and we translate that state before every draw call into a Vulkan pipeline. Uh, sometimes there's not really a one-to-one -one mapping so we have to do some hex and emulate some things in the shaders themselves, but it works. Uh, then we also have to translate the shaders. We translate them into Sphere V on two different stage. First we analyze them bytecode and see which kind of optimizations can be done and that's really important because the GCN ISA which is used in by AMD for the past couple of years has lots of quirks which are not really uh, used in Spear V or HLSL or anything like that. There are 64 D word vector registers, there is dynamic resource descriptors, there, is, there might be self-modifying code. Um, I haven't seen it but it could happen. And we need to assume that these kind of really, really weird scenarios are not going to happen. And as long as those assumptions hold, most of the 
uh, shaders can be trivially mapped. And yeah, and those PM4 commands can also do like trivial like uh, synchronization, like events, memory writes, uh, say, writing timestamps somewhere. All of that is emulated on the CPU. We don't really um, uh, use the host GPU for that, but we might in the future. There is also a few resources below. Aside from graphics, there is the interrupt handler through which other engines might fire some MSI interrupts. There is also the video decoder and compression engines, which are entirely ignored for now. SDMA is also unimplemented. GMC manages the virtual memory, uh, the VMIDs I mentioned before. It basically maps a virtual and a virtual address space of one VMID into the host RAM. It cannot do that to host VRAM, uh, so host VRAM is managed uh, by the Vulkan backend and it's terribly inefficient, so we are going to work on that. Then there is SAMU, the Secure Asset Management Unit. It works by re-implementing the CCP or Cryptographic Coprocessor interface. It also re-implements the secure modules. We do so by reverse engineering only the kernel drivers. Most of those secure modules are still unimplemented. That's why the text is in orange. And the reason why we need to re-implement them is that we don't have access to their actual code, so we cannot run them as is in an emulator. The reason being that we don't have keys. And this is a very important point that I want to make. We don't have keys and we don't need them. And therefore, it's not our target to break SAMU in any way. We don't care about it. We just decrypt everything that we need ahead of time in the actual console. And therefore, the actual users will need a real console to set up the emulator for the first time. Then there is SMC, which is the system management controller. I don't know what it does, and the kernel doesn't seem to use it, so that's great. And well, and finally, there is the display output, uh, like the display controller engine and it exposes several devices DCE numbered from 0 to 5 and number 1 is used for the actual display output the UI is connected to that and yeah basically that sums everything up regarding GC and also the emulator as you see above now for future work Although there is still lots of work to be done in the Haxem hypervisor our immediate priority for now is the emulator itself as mentioned earlier, Orbital QEMU is a direct fork of QEMU. And QEMU is a massive project that offers many features that we don't actually need. And even worse, it has several disadvantages over other projects. First, it only allows one single guest architecture per binary, and that's an issue if you ever wanted to low-level emulate Aeolia or some of the AMD GPU engines, which are not really x86, but something else. It only allows one single machine, for instance, uh, and that's an issue if you wanted to do some more complex uh, experiments with the emulator itself. This issue actually arises from quite poor code quality. For instance, uh, for instance some devices uh, expose some global variables, and that's not a proper coding practice, I would say. There is a, an explicit or runtime inheritance model for defining those devices. So all the information is specified at runtime and all the casts between those types happen at runtime and well, I personally don't think that's a great idea. Um, the build system is objectively horrible. Uh, it's uh, 8,000 lines of code script that uh, doesn't even work natively on Windows so you need MSYS too and many people have complained about it and uh, every single developer that has helped in Orbital went through a very, very painful process of setting everything up. We don't want that. And well, then there is the issue with restrictive license. I personally don't like JPL, but that's a question of personal taste. And to address all these issues, I propose uh, to just get rid of QMU and transform this project from Orbital QMU into Orbital NG. This name is actually temporary. NG stands for New Generation. And basically the goal here is getting rid of everything that we don't need from QMU, start an emulator from scratch in C++ using CMake as build system. Some people don't like CMake, but at least I think it's better than 8,000 lines of code. It builds already natively on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and NetBSD. This choice is actually not a coincidence. Those are the platforms where Haxm works. Uh, we will, of course, allow multiple machines, for instance, and also address the issue with multiple architectures per machine also quite soon. Once released, it will be under a permissive license. And, of course, aside from all the PS4-specific stuff, it will also have generic features for, you know, like a GDB server for debugging and all that that we actually found quite useful in QMU. At the moment, I'm still working on this project. Once Orbital NG is able to do the exact same things as our current emulator, it will be released publicly and it will replace Orbital QMU in our main Orbital repository. Immediately afterwards, uh, we are going 
to get rid of orbital BIOS and orbital grub, either by high-level emulating them directly from the emulator, just to simplify things a little bit, or if possible by dumping the PS4 BIOS or micro BIOS, I think it's called. Let's see how that works. So this is the overview that I wanted to give on the future plans of Orbital. I hope it helped answering some questions and that you found it interesting overall. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to drop them below. Also, join us at our IRC or Discord servers. There's links in the video description, so make sure to check them out. And yeah, thanks a lot.